Hey guys, welcome back to another version of our lesson on ARM processors. Um, I just want to make a quick video today. I figured out, uh, with some help, um, figured out how to uh, get the embedded uh, load tool to work, the MDK uh, tool to work that's inside of Microvisions, Kyle's Microvision. Um, so I'm going to take you guys through how to do this. Um, I do want to say, I give a shout out for um, Redicom channel. I've got a link to his channel in the uh, description down here. He uh, posted a video response to one of my videos. Um, right offhand, I can't remember which video it was, but he posted this video response and uh, mentioned uh, how to put this together. Um, so I want to give him a special thanks to him just because I just I haven't had I really did not have time to just sit and kind of poke around with this and get it to work so um, he posted that video looked through it uh, followed kind of his steps that he did um, and got it to work and also he does a really good job um, his his language is not in English um, so um, for those of you that need need it to be in English you can um, choose the closed captioning option or captions option at the bottom of the screen and he has a few different uh, languages I think there for you to uh, click on so that way you can choose your appropriate language to so you can read what he's doing and um, but it's really straightforward and I'm gonna go ahead and take you through it but uh, just definitely wanted to give a shout out to Redicom channel for that because that was that was really cool uh, so anyway, so basically what we're going to do to set this up is we're going to come up here to this target options, uh, which is right here, which I, I don't know, I think you can get to it from project, uh, yeah, project, and you go options for target, target one. So either way you want to do it, click on that or click on the, that way. Anyway, we come in here and we've got, we're under the target tab. So what we want to do is we want to make sure and make sure our crystal is set at 8 megahertz. If it's anything else, set at 8 because that's what, uh, or no, I take it back. Um, uh, ours is 16, so we'll set it 16 megahertz. Okay, and then make sure that IROM1 and this IRAM1 are check marked, and uh, the dot is in the startup for this one. And make sure that these uh, these values are given. So you've got eight uh, OX eight, and then six zeros after that, and then OX two with uh, four zeros after that and then over here in RAM 1 you've got OX2 with one, two, three, four, five, six, with seven zeros after that and OX4 with three zeros after that so that way you can you can see those two so alright now once you've got that put together um, what we're going to do is we're going to move Mosey on over here to debug and under debug uh, by default I think use simulator is selected we want to click the radial dot for use and then under this drop down we're going to choose the ST link debugger okay so ST link debugger and then we also want to check mark run to main because when this executes we want it to run run to the main function so check mark run to main then under settings up here down here where it says port um, I think defaults JTAG so you want to choose software SW and then 1 megahertz is fine and that's all you need to do there then go to trace and under trace, um, I don't think this really matters until you enable it, but uh, just in case, we'll set it to our clock speed that we chose them, which is 16 megahertz. Um, but I, I don't, I think I played with it, and I don't think this matters until you enable it. But uh, anyway, just keep everything consistent. 16 megahertz here. Flash download, okay, this is where you choose uh, basically your programming algorithms. Now for us, I'm going to remove this one and take you through the whole process. Now for this one, you're going to choose Add, and for us, we're using ST, so you're going to get down here to ST stuff, so here's the STM stuff. Ours is an STM32 F0, but ours is an F05X, see that right here? I made the mistake of just choosing F0, and it doesn't work right. Ours is, is not 16 bytes, ours is 64K. So it has to know that because otherwise, you know, it doesn't know the limits of the flash, and so it's going to try to cram our program into the wrong memory space, and yeah, it'll get wacky. So choose uh, F05X. That's if you're using this exact board that I'm using, which is the F0 um, Discovery board. So choose this, click Add, 
And then now here's some options up here that give you some load options. You can either erase the full chip, um, erase the sectors in it, or don't erase anything. Um, I just you leave the default erase sectors. Um, you can have it program and verify, or just program or whatever. And then this reset and run, I check mark this one, but what that means is the minute it's in programming, it will do a soft reset and uh, you know, basically bring it up when that happens. Um, if you don't check mark this, all is not lost, but it won't run until you push the reset button. And I know uh, if you guys seen the video before, I show you which one that is. That's at least on on this uh, discovery board, the one that I'm using this uh, STM32F0 discovery. This guy, it's the black button that's on it. The black button. It's even labeled, I think it's labeled B2 and it even is labeled reset. The other one, the blue button, is the user button. That's one that you can configure in software. But the reset button is basically like in our PIC microcontrollers. It's basically like the mem clear. Um, how we always put, you know, uh, how we can how we put that pull up on there and you can pull it down and it'll reset the ch do a soft software reset of the chip. Same thing. But that's the black button on the STM32 F0 discovery uh, board, which is one that we're using. So once all that's done, click OK. Um, go over here to utilities and same thing we're going to say use target device for flash programming you'll make sure and check check this radial button you'll skip down through your I think by default it's something else and choose the ST-Link debugger okay and then the settings should migrate it should have the exact same settings as what we just set up so you won't have to really mess with that and then you want to update the target before debugging and then okay and then now when we rebuild we're going to rebuild our product project okay we've got zero errors and zero warnings so all's clear across the board and now we click load and now down here you'll see it program and then see how it says it says application running and right now I I would show you guys this but just for this quick video I'm not going to but it's it's blinking it's this is our blink project you know that we've been doing and so it's it's blinking now and it's doing its thing and so if I wanted to change up I don't know, change up something, change this up to like half second intervals, let's say. Um, I can build it, load it, and now I'm seeing that it's it's blinking in half second intervals now. So there you go. Now you don't have to use that external software if you don't want to use it. And you can also turn off that create hex file if you go back up here. Um, go to output. You can uncheck the create hex file because you don't need to. You can have it just just program it straight out of the IDE here. But if you still like having a hex file created, you know, you can choose that. You know, and you'll always have the hex file for if you want to use that ST-Link software for you know maybe programming stuff. You know, out in the field, so to speak, I guess. So, but anyway, but that's basically the quick rundown of how to do that. Like I said, I, I got a link to Redicom's channel uh, down below. And then um, I've also got a uh, a uh, uh, link to their to the uh, manual for for the, the talking about the out, what what to set up for the Kyle uh, the MDK version. The link to that little kind of manual excerpt, and in that manual there'll be there'll be a spot that tells you those settings um, as well. The main thing that it doesn't tell you is that programming algorithm um, that I've noticed. I think that that manual does not tell you uh, where are we at? this. The, the tell you that you need to choose this, choose what algorithm that you're running. And I think that was my main stumbling block was was that was choosing this algorithm. That and that I didn't have. I don't know how, but I didn't have this uh, set up. This stuff down here set up correctly as well as some other check mark things. So it's good to run through that manual, but uh, don't forget that in your settings, in your flash download, you have to put basically what chip it's flashing to, what algorithm you need to use to flash to it. So don't forget that. That's the main one to forget. So anyway, so um, check out the, the link to Redicom's channel. Um, he only has a couple videos, but they are very good. So support him, and hopefully he'll make some more videos for us all. He's got some really good uh, uh, links and news about like ARM, uh, different ARM processors and things like that and some of the news stuff that's going on. He has a lot of cool um, li links and stuff for all that. So check out check out uh, Redicom's channel below and we will see you later. Keep on programming and have fun doing it. See you later guys.